Hey guys, right now you're looking at um, quite a few thousand dollars worth of camera equipment that is boxed up. I boxed this equipment up probably about seven years ago and it's time to move this equipment on. I would like to sell it but uh, it's antiquated. It's film camera equipment. Now that digital's here to stay, I would say that the days of this camera are now over. I've been a professional photographer for many years and in those years this is the best of my equipment that you're looking at right now in these boxes. I thought that before this technology was forgotten forever in history that I would do a put together of this camera one last time. This is a 6x6 six six format. In the trade business it's called a medium format camera and it takes excellent film pictures. I use this in the studio for portrait work as well as weddings on location. So hang out with me and we'll talk about the SQAI Bronica. We'll put it together and see what a real working camera of the day used to look like. And I know I joke when I say that the new Nikon with all its accessories on it is a beast. This truly is the beast and when I put it together you'll see what I mean. So that's coming up next. Hang on for that. Okay, so all these boxes contain my professional medium format camera, the Bronica SQAI. And when you purchased a professional camera of this type, everything was sold separately and it was all built on a body. And here's the body for this camera. And then you would customize it to work in your situation and that's what all these other pieces are for. So let's go ahead and grab the body here and we'll start with it and then start building this thing. Okay so this is the main body of the camera here and this is where the lens goes so we're gonna have to add the lens and then up here is where the viewfinder goes and we'll have to add that as well. This is where we advance the film. It's a crank that pops out. Okay. On this side is the film counter. And on the very back is where you put a custom back to hold the type of cam uh, film that you want to shoot. This will shoot multiple sizes of film, okay? and then there's a tripod socket on the bottom. So this is the main camera body. Let's go ahead and um, get the lens out and then it will start looking like a camera. The lens is... Actually I have a couple different lenses for it. Let me grab those. I'll be right back. Okay so I grabbed the two lenses that I have for my Bronica camera. Let me just show you this one. Um, now you bought the lens depending on the kind of film that you plan on shooting and then the type of work that you needed to do. The reason why you pick the size of lens that you needed for the job is because these are not zoom lenses, these are fixed lenses and they have a very wide aperture which allows greater control. Um, so this lens has a rear cap that you just twist off okay and it does have some electronics on it this is a TTL sensor for the for the um, light meter let's go ahead and take the cover off our camera here and there's red dots that you line up and then twist okay There's another lens in this box. I'm not going to get that out right now. It's a smaller lens. But uh, 
generally what I used to do is uh, use this lens in this box for weddings and this lens would be for portrait work. Okay, let me grab the viewfinder next and we'll put that on as well. So hang out for that. Okay, well I took the viewfinder for this camera out of the box and it's this. The viewfinder is actually a prism device that will bring the image back to your eye from behind the camera. If we look on the body of the camera, let me take this cover off here. You can see that there's a matte finished screen down in here. Now I know I'm not going to be able to get it to show up on um, camera. Let me get this lens cap off here. Yeah, it's just not going to show up. But anyway, if I look down through this viewfinder, I can actually see what's coming out the lens, okay? And some guys use the camera this way, and there's actually a hood that you can put on the top of this. And you can put your eyes down there, or you can use a prism finder like I have here. And I prefer the prism finders, um, even though you don't have to use one. And it, this one has built-in electronics, and it monitors your light for you and helps to manage the uh, exposure. You can see the prism down here, and these are the gold contacts that contact the body here. So to put this on, we push slide. Okay, so that's what the camera's starting to look like. It's growing. Now, what we need is a film back on the rear of this, something that we can put our film in. So, give me a minute and I'll find the film back and I'll show you the film that goes in here too. Hang on for that. All right, so I dug out my film backs. Here's what one of them looks like sitting here on the top and I've got another one here too so the reason why there's different film backs is maybe you only want to put a 12 exposure roll in well you had to actually change the entire film back just to do that and different size film as well so this is the part that contains the film and you can actually take these off the camera and switch them as you want to use a different film back, okay? This film back opens up and then inside are the reels that will hold this kind of film. And this is one of the types that I used to use here is the Portra. Inside this um, foil sleeve is the actual film and we had to keep this in the refrigerator to keep it fresh there is a due date on it for sure look at this one so this one expired in 2007 anyway um, so let me go ahead and put the film back on here to grow our little camera actually our little camera I just had to take this cover off here's the shutter down in here okay so to put the film back on I have to situate it and then push and you can see the the film back is now on here and I can take this out at will and like I said switch it for another film back and just keep shooting often when we went to weddings or other activities that there was no downtime you would have multiple film backs loaded with this film and just carry them around and when you emptied one you would just put on another and typically these hold uh, 12 24 shots so there was a lot of work to it I mean you had to be on your toes and make sure that your film is well managed and there was a counter on the individual film back okay give me a minute I'll be right back okay to make sure that you didn't miss the shot with this giant camera I like to use a power winder and this advances the film rather than turning this this knob I popped this knob off that I showed you 
at the beginning of this video to mount this power grip on here so let me add that on you can see that there's just a motor inside this grip that actually turns this this um, shutter and then the whole thing just bolts up on the bottom sorry I'm up, if I'm not in the camera right now I'm struggling the same as a beast I'm not kidding and this this battery grip does contain its own batteries of course but its own motor as well to turn the okay so there's the grip and I like the grip because it gives you something to hold on to and the buttons right here okay so you can just kind of hold it like this and shoot and that was continuous or single okay let me see what other kind of goodies we can put on this thing I'll be back now please keep in mind that the medium format has been around a long time in, phot in photography before any computers were available to fix things after the fact so it was a good practice to have a billow that you could put on and insert filters into the back of this and just kind of color correct and do your special effects on the go basically is what it amounted to and you could mount this billow to the front of your camera and it allowed you to quickly change um, filters and do special effects with it. Very useful. I had, the filters could be a whole nother show. I won't get into that right now, but uh, the filters were used to soften skin or to do custom lighting, if you will. So the way that the camera sits right now would be appropriate for me to use in a studio where I was taking senior pictures or couples, that sort of thing. Now, if I was going to take this on the go, I would need my own lighting system that was portable. And that's what all this stuff back here is all about. This turns this camera into a portable lighting studio as well as um, a rig to you know hold your camera up. So let me get that into place and I'll show you this next. This is a bracket that the whole thing fits on. So let me do that here in just a moment. All right, well, I had to widen the view because it's starting to grow. Anyway, this is a, a rig that I just put on here, a bracket to hold this big giant light and this flash in particular has two flashes in one and this could reduce red eye by going off first and then your main flash would kick in or you could use it as a bounce light anyway I'm not going to get into the bounce light fixture but let me go ahead and open this up and get this light out of here. Well, you can tell that this flash is serious business. I mean, look at the size of that monster. And this thing would last all day, you know, eight hours, nine hours, blast and full blast all day. And then you got these battery packs that were quick change and you always had a couple of those in your bag. That's why the photographers of the past needed assistance. I always needed an assistant to help manage my batteries and my film and remember what I'm supposed to be doing during the day, especially if we're out shooting. An assistant was very important to a photographer. And you can see that here's the charger here. Let me go ahead and put this light on this camera hopefully so on my right is that a giant camera that's 
That's about as big as it gets, people. And I used to carry that around every Saturday when we were doing weddings every Saturday. We were busy. So that's what the camera looks like all together. There are other accessories that I didn't show you, such as the filters I talked about. And then there's a couple more boxes here of, like there's a focusing lever that goes on here. And there's an, an, another um, lens hood. And there's some small stuff like shutter releases and timers. But uh, that's pretty much it for the professional camera, the, the Bronica. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. I mainly film this to remind me of the past. I don't expect I'll probably ever shoot a medium format camera again. But I did in the past, and I think it's important to document the past. And um, so that's it. That is the Bronica SQAI medium format. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Leave me a thumbs up if you liked it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye for now. Hey guys, this is Steve. Thanks for watching. Hey, don't forget to subscribe if you like this video and be sure to rate and comment. See ya.